Matt. What's up? Get some liveliness in here today. Hi. It's been a great show. Can I stand on this? I feel like Elon Musk. Um, thank you guys for being here. It's been an awesome day. Thanks to the ACG crowd. I'm super flattered you guys would want to stick around and hear me and some of the other entrepreneurs who are going to get up speak. So I was asked to tell my story, which I didn't think anyone really cared about except my mom. So I'm super excited to share that. So real quick, uh, I'm Matt Matros. I'm the founder of a business called Protein Bar. Protein Bar is a 22-unit chain of healthy food restaurants based here in Chicago. We have locations also in Washington, D.C., Colorado, in Denver and Boulder. And we're pretty soon going to announce our fourth market. So I'm super excited about telling you about the story of how I came to start Protein Bar and some of the other ventures that I have going on. Namely, I'm the board advisor for Farmed Here which is the longest running leading indoor vertical farm. So that's a big mouthful way of saying we grow produce indoors using hydroponic technology that's fully organic. I'll talk about it in a second. And I'm the co-founder of a pretty awesome business called Limitless High Definition Coffee and Tea, which we'll get into in a little bit. So what is my story? From California, born and raised, I grew up in a small town called Palmdale, a little bit north of Los Angeles. Went to USC right downtown. But growing up, I was the fat kid. So that was me at my college graduation. Uh, I weighed 210 pounds. And that was a week after I turned 22. Um, I left my job as a sports agent representing professional baseball players and committed to a high protein diet. Um, Focus on high protein foods, eliminating carbohydrates, and eliminating processed sugar from my diet. After the, at the summer of 2001, I dropped, as you guys can see, 50 pounds. I've put a few pounds back on since I've been an entrepreneur in the restaurant industry, and I've gotten a little bit older. But uh, at my peak, I lost 50 pounds. Fast forward a few years, I went to the University of Michigan for graduate school, got my MBA, had an amazing two years, and then came to Chicago to work for Kraft Foods. I was a brand manager of Kraft Cheese, which I still cannot say with a straight face after all these years. Um, during my career at Kraft, which spanned three and a half years, I got to work on some pretty iconic brands. Singles, which is one of the preeminent brands within Kraft Foods, a billion dollar brand. Natural Cheese, and then the South Beach Diet Platform of Foods. While I was at Kraft, I got into triathlon, uh, which is a pretty awesome sport. And I used to start my day working in Glenview by working out at Lifetime Fitness in Old Orchard. And every day I would stop after working out in their cafe, the Life Cafe, and I'd get a shake. And they would charge me eight bucks, and they'd put these tiny little scoops of protein into my shake. So after a year and a half of getting swindled for $8 a day, I started putting my protein into a baggie. And I would scoop that out in the morning. I would take it to the live cafe after working out. And they'd charge me maybe $2 for the cup and the milk and the banana and what have you. So I did that for a year and a half and then said, aha, this is my idea. I want to start a shake shop. So I had the magical idea to start a healthy food shake shop um, in the loop. Now, how did I get it going? I took all of my life savings, which at the time was about 220 grand. Uh, as you guys can see, I'm pretty candid and open and whatever. Um, I got some SBA loans from the government for $320,000, and I ran up my credit cards for 50K. And what did that get me? Got me the first protein bar, which opened across the street from the then Sears Tower, now Willis Tower, in Chicago. And as I mentioned, we were mostly just protein shakes. 91% of what we sell today wasn't on the original menu. And I know there are some customers who came in here from day one, like Laura over there. She used to be a a customer from day one. At the time, we were selling mostly just protein shakes. And to be frank, we weren't doing very well. Um, So out of mere survival, about eight months in, in September of 2009, I started tweaking with some food. So by January of 2010, so about nine months after we had opened, I added food to the menu. That's when things took off. Um, Started developing long lines. That was our original store by Sears Tower. And people started asking, what is this? Is this a franchise or what's going on? And I'm sitting in the back rolling burritos and making protein sticks. No, this is all me. Uh, It's everything I had. This is my whole everything. So those people started to get curious and they wanted to invest in protein. So from one person who invested 285 grand to 16 more for one three, for 17 more after that who added two million, and then three five who came from another 32 million, this is over about three and a half years. Uh, We were able to open up 12 stores. 
across DC and in Chicago. And then we were really humming. This was summer of 2013, and I knew for us that private equity was really the way to go. So we wanted to put our foot on the gas and really expand, and the only way to do that, I thought, was private equity. So I had a pretty robust dating period of about 30 firms in private equity, and I settled to finally dating about four or five of them, and finally walked down the aisle with Catterton Partners, which is a preeminent consumer-focused private equity firm, which some of you guys may know from your um, accounting and private equity transactions. They own brands like Core Power Yoga, Restoration Hardware, Outback Steakhouse, and now they own the majority of Protein Bar. So I'm super proud to be a partner with Catterton. Oh, this was after we were humming and, and rocking and rolling and getting our stores going. You see the lines out of our, the lines out the door. Mark Cuban, who's one of our investors. Um, but then, as I mentioned, I closed a deal with Catterton Partners. They bought a majority of the company. That was in late 2013. I stayed on to run the business for another year. And then I realized, heck, I need some help. Holy moly. This company is getting way too big for me. So I recruited a man named Samir Wagle to be the president and COO of Protein Bar. He came in July of 2014. And then a few months later, I promoted him to CEO. And then what I did? Took some time off. So I took a sabbatical in the first half of 2015 and traveled the globe. I called it a spiritual and culinary sabbatical. I went all over the globe. My trip by the numbers, you can see I went to 15 countries across five continents, took a boatload of pictures, flew a ton, went to a lot of airports, and took a lot of flights, and really did it all. And then I came back in late April of 2015 and said, heck, well, now what? What do I want to do? And I'm still involved in Protein Bar, still on the board, still the founder, still the face, but I want to do some other stuff in this world. So the first thing I wanted to get involved with, as I was traveling, I saw that there's a major disparagement between us very obese, wealthy Westerners, specifically Americans, and the rest of the world. There's a huge divide between the, the countries that are wealthy and have food and are obese and the countries that are literally poor and starving. And I thought that one of the ways to do that was through indoor farming. It just so happens that the leading indoor vertical farm is based in the Chicagoland area in Bedford Park. It's called Farm Tier. So I got involved with Farm Tier. What does Farm Tier do? As I mentioned before, we are a hydroponic grower. So the word hydroponic just means without soil. We grow all organically, fully indoors, without the use of any natural elements such as the sun. Um, and we grow 365 days year round. The best part about it, fully, indoor, fully organic, and we use 97% less water than traditional farming. So there's an example of what our grow beds look like. The best way to describe what an indoor farm is, is I like to tell people it's like walking into a Costco. Big warehouse, and instead of seeing Rows that are floor to ceiling of pallets of Cheerios and Huggies and all the products that the Leo Burnett gal said are bad for us. Um, we have organic produce that are growing on grow beds under LED lights. So to grow things, it's really easy. It only involves four elements. A seed that's been germinated, water, nutrients, and light. So you can do everything that grows outside. You can bring that indoors. So right now we're growing microgreens. We're growing um, leaf vegetables such as kale and arugula. And we're going basil, which you see a picture of me and our president holding in our hand. I'm also starting a fully, fully vertically integrated coffee business. The gentleman from JB just now was talking about the Kisher brand, talking about mental clarity. Well, I believe that coffee is also a performance driver focused around mental clarity. And me with some of my co-founders who are here today, we went to the source. We went to El Salvador. We were going to Colombia to actually source beans that are cleaner. And we have a cleaner bean that gives you more mental clarity. And people notice it. We have tons of studies to show that. So in a couple weeks, we're opening up our roastery in Fulton Market. And we'll sell wholesale to restaurants and bars. We'll sell wholesale at retail to Whole Foods and Target. We'll sell direct to the consumer. And eventually, we'll open coffee shops under the limitless high-definition coffee and tea brand. I'm also starting a first-of-its-kind 501c3 restaurant with the Boca Group. Don't have too many details to say about this just yet because we're not fully public with it, but the Boca Group, if you guys are well aware, are first class uh, five-star operator here in Chicago. And what we're going to do from a 501c3 perspective is pretty awesome and amazing. We're super excited about the ability to give back to the Chicago community. I wasn't sure if we were going to have FAQ, so I decided to just put a couple FAQ or a couple questions that I get all the time up on the stage. I'll be pretty fast with it because I know you guys have been sitting here all day. First one, you put your entire life savings and everything you had in a protein bar. 
how are you certain the risk was worth it? Well, for entrepreneurship, you never really are 100% certain. For me at the time, I was 29. I was single. I'm still single, but I had no kids. I had no wives, no, fa no mouths to feed, and I knew that this was the idea that I wanted to do. So I always tell entrepreneurs that the best idea in the world is the one that you're obsessed with. And for me with Protein Bar, when I first came up with that idea on October 17, 2007, I became obsessed with that idea, and I wanted to do nothing else. And that's exactly how I feel right now with Limitless or with a 501c3 restaurant. I'm obsessed with these ideas. So that's how I knew the risk was worth it. Number two, who are your big mentors and who do you turn to for advice? Um, I typically tend to be a contrarian when it comes to founder or when it comes to mentors and advice because I always tell entrepreneurs that no one has ever done that before. Mark Zuckerberg didn't have an advisor that he could turn to because no one had ever created the most amazing social network in the world. Bill Gates didn't have a mentor and advisor to turn to because no one had ever written the most awesome software platform in the world. I kind of tend to be that same way. While I try to surround myself with smart people who've gone through many things, no one's ever created a protein bar before. No one's ever created a limitless before. So I just try to surround myself with, with awesome smart people such as a lot of the people in the room here today. Uh, and then finally, how do you know when to bring on a co-founder? For me, I decided to bring in a co-founder with Limitless because I found three awesome people that were super experts at what I wanted to do. And I learned from Protein Bar where I was doing everything um, that sometimes it makes a little bit more sense to bring in experts um, to help you out along the way. My big lesson learned from Protein Bar was that people are really the uh, reason you're going to be successful or not. And smart people, most specifically, are that reason. So with Limitless, I decided to bring on three awesome co-founders. I talk really fast because I know you guys have been sitting here listening to people talk to you all day. That's kind of it for me. That's how you can get a hold of me. Feel free to shoot me a note. Please eat lots of protein bar burritos. Please drink a ton of low toxin coffee from Limus. We'll be on the market in about a month. Um, and that's it. Thanks so much.